Hey. Oh. <laughs> oh well, nothing I can do till I'm on the ground. Yeah. But the problem is our transponder is stuck. If I can't get the issue resolved on the ground, then we won't go to Kitzburg because I need to be able to change radio stations. Yeah. Well, I did this down in uh, Baden Württemberg, so I, where I lived in Mannheim, it wasn't too far away. So you must have come across it, or at least traveled through I it? I traveled through it on the way to just talking about where the Icarus C-42 was built. And where was it built? In Sigmaringen. Well, that's where the company seat is. Okay. Uh, that's built there. I think in this Different. country, the people who handle it is TLAC, the light aircraft company. But very much like this aircraft is from Eastern Europe, and they ship over the components, and then it's assembled by Eurofox in Kent. I think we're going to go zero 04. Mark has been using zero 01, but it looks like there's a little bit of a... Yeah. I think you can use both and... Huh? Zero 09. Zero 09. Zero 04. No, he goes... He comes from, <laughs> from here. He goes this way. Oh, he spent all morning washing his plane. He said he was absolutely knackered. Yeah, it's it's really tiring. It's, yeah. You gotta climb all over the place, which I've got to do this uh, week. Okay, the temperature's up. We'll go up there as well. Spyview, Golf Charlie, Oscar, Charlie Golf, taxing to the hold of runway 04, Spyview. I've just got a text from Seren who says it's a lovely day. That's quite useful because it's in the direction that we're flying. So. Yeah. Fast as ah. Yeah, I think it's because we've got the wind. Yeah. You only needed ten meter. That was that. Five view, Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf for lining up runway zero four. Five view. He looks happy there. Brakes are off, fuel pumps are on, fuel contents are sufficient, fuel caps are on. You ready? Yeah. Flap set, trim set. Feels quite buoyant today compared to uh, last yeah, time we were flying. Yeah. So when I drove over, yeah. Yes. You know where uh, when you come up zigzag hill. Yes. And then there's this where you're on the higher 
on the road, top level. The, the yeah. top level. It's quite pretty from there. You've it got is a pretty, view. yes. Um, there was a plane, yeah. a micro, well, light aircraft, below me. Ow! <laughs> I really thought, of, wow, he's coming, he's coming fairly close, as in low, yeah. and then he even dipped down over the road, over the down. But there is nothing to land, is there? There is nowhere to land there, no. Compton Abbas isn't far from there, yeah, unless no. it's a private strip. Oh, but yeah. remember, our house is 734 yeah. feet above sea level, and that point is even higher, so I'm sure he was the legal, uh, at least over 500 feet above uh, ground level. But Traffic over there, I, I want to say. Is it a factor? I can't see it. So if you I have no, it's too far off. No, that's brilliant. Well, well done, well spotted. Could come across that way. See? I see it now. Yeah, it's not really a factor at the moment, unless it turns towards us. So I was chatting to Quinton, and he was saying that it's so nice to not have to think about work, and that's also nice for his flying. When he goes flying, he can go flying when it's the best weather best conditions and he can take his time and enjoy it. He said one of the things that he found was when he was working, he was just so desperate to, to get flying that he would that when he eventually managed to get flying, he would yeah. forget to enjoy the experience because he was so keen to Yeah. Well he said he was um, yesterday evening and it's a beauty because he does live fairly close to the airfield so he you know it's a five minute then he's there, he can set up and go. Just pop in, yeah. Yeah. But as far as Quite a drive. It is, yeah. And I love the airfield that we're at. I yeah. Mean, uh, even if there were one closer, I mean, we could even consider hangering at Compton Abbas, but I don't think it would give us the same freedom as we have with Spire View. So it's worth the extra drive, but it does then add in that other factor into the equation. I don't think Compton Abbas is on our price list now. Who knows That's right. <laughs> Changes. Change time, exactly, so yep. It's I don't a think it's attractive for anybody anymore. Different animal now. Yeah. Approaching waypoint. Approaching waypoint. Bournemouth air shows on. I thought we could have, we would see more from it from here. Yeah. There's also the um, festival, what is it? End of something festival. End of the road. Yeah. And the llama tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? Like a music festival? I think it is, yeah. I saw it on the yeah. side it. Sierra, Sierra, Bournemouth, uh, radar, Roger. Okay. Uh, if you can continue to route yeah. eastbound and direct you know, somebody. north uh, very shortly, uh, just uh, 737 to land. Whilst looking for traffic, I failed to notice that the main instrument panel had started to self select the autopilot menu screen. When it eventually caught my eye, I tried to cancel it, believing that it had been overlooked since my last interaction with it. But it quickly became apparent that there was an issue. I tried cycling through a few of the other menu options in the hope that this might just be a software glitch. But to no avail. Given that the issue appeared to be linked with the autopilot, I decided to take control of the aircraft and fly it manually. Autopilot, disconnect. As time passed, the issue became more persistent and intrusive, and it was clear that there was a significant problem, especially as I could no longer operate the transponder and radio from the touchscreen. screen. 
After checking to ensure the USB data stick was correctly inserted, I made the decision to restart the Dynon altogether. Caution. Temporarily leaving us with no information on the performance of any of the aircraft's main systems, including the engine, warning systems, and transponder. Dynon Skyview. Got a problem with this guy, Dynon. Can you see? Yeah. Won't well, let me go out of the. Uh... Well, we are not a pilot, and that's it. No. It won't let me cancel out of that, and if it does, it's only briefly. But keep, there's no way to override. No, keep selecting it. But you can't steer out of it. Oh no, I, it's fine. There's no lack of, there's no control. It just won't let me go out of the screen. Oh right. The only way I think would be to turn off the autopilot. Message. No great harm. Doing it again. Good, so we can change frequency now. Okay, Whiskey Roger, there's a Robin on final approach behind that traffic before lining up one four behind. So Golf one four land at your discretion. Is there a four zero degrees eight knots? Go on, go Oh well, nothing I can do till I'm on the ground. Yeah. But the problem is our transponder is stuck. Much calmer. Yeah. Traffic down there. That's miles away. Down there? Yeah. wonder if it's a loose cable. I'll find out when we get down. Does what I'm saying make sense? I can't close that. Yeah. It's fine because everything's reading and we can see where we're going. But yeah. It's just irritating. Modern avionics are incredibly sophisticated pieces of technology, designed and built following years of research and development. The level of refinement surpasses that which was available to astronauts on some of the early missions to the Moon. With that in mind, I decided to deploy my extensive understanding of this equipment into resolving the issue. Hey. <laughs> the science underpinning that particular technical approach to addressing the issue is too complex to cover in this video, but needless to say, it didn't produce the outcome I'd hoped for. Good with information. Golf Charlie, Oscar Charlie Golf requesting join. Welcome back. Vacate to the left. Taxi pumps are school. Charlie, Charlie, Golf. afternoon. It's runway East One Four, left hand circuit. The QFE One Zero One Seven. One Zero One Seven One Four, left hand. Golf, Charlie, Golf. Golf, Charlie, Golf. Currently got no other reported circuit traffic. How will you be joining? Overhead join for runway One Four, left hand. Good report overhead. We'll go, Golf, Charlie, Golf. If I can't get the issue resolved on the ground. Then we won't go to Kittyborg because I need to be able to change radio stations. Yeah. I can't see you now, so tax at your discretion and caution any work in progress to the pump. Roger, we're taxing the field, thanks. Golf, Charlie, Golf, good with. Golf, Charlie, Golf, receiving. Yeah, slight change of plan. The wind sock seems to be favouring runway 32 now, so when you're in the overhead, if you could make your approach to runway 32, that's a right hand circuit. 32, right hand, uh, Golf, Charlie, Golf. Uh, Goodwood from Golf Charlie Golf. Golf Charlie Golf. Uh, traffic permitting, would you be happy with a long final for that? Absolutely, 
two, fine, yeah, no problem at all with that. Report the four miles around for a straight approach runway one, uh, correction, three, two. Yeah, and uh, I've got no other reported traffic to affect. Wonderful, sir. Thank you. Did you say four mile, uh, Golf Charlie Golf? Hi, sir. Full carry, Golf Charlie Golf. My car does it all the time, baby. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Yeah. Didn't wait long enough last time. Just need really longer to, to really drive down, doesn't it? It could be the heat as well, you know, the temperature. I cannot believe this. You know, what? when we, we've flown in some proper heat. Yeah, we have. And, you know, remember when we went to Welchpool? Yeah. And we couldn't oh, hardly sit in that plane and it yeah. It did not give up then, so... I think it's just one of these things. Glitchy, glitchy. Yeah. That's why it's nice to have. Yeah. I didn't feel panicked at all about turning. In fact, the first time I turned it off, I thought, oh, oh, I'm, <laughs> <literally> <laughs> I'm giving it up. But then as soon as I did, I realized all yeah. of that's there. And I'm so pleased Yes. we had that secondary fitted. Yeah. Because it's quite close in terms of, and we could land with that. There's so many golf courses down here. People re retiring to Chichester. I mean, I would. I mean, I don't play golf, but I, I like this part. I mean, you're right by the water. Yeah. Not far from the South Downs. Got Goodwood just there. Who we love. Traffic. Where's the traffic? Traffic. And helicopter golf, Charlie Oscar Romeo Yankees, just uh, west of the tunnel for rejoicing. Uh, Charlie Oscar Romeo Yankee, hello again, Kim. We just changed round now, so it's three two right in circuit. But do you want to come straight in from the uh, from the north to the triangle from this? If you've got no other traffic, that works fine for me, Rob. Yeah, if I can. I've got nothing else departing. I've just got one shortly to land, but that's uh, report final for the triangle from the north. Then QFE's one zero one seven. Uh, report final from the, for the triangle from the north, 1017 the QFN. I'm looking for the one landing cost here, yeah. Thanks very much, Remy. Uh, he's, uh, he's, still, he's still sort of south of Chichester, so, uh, so he's got a long way. Okay, thanks very much. Go for Remy. Thank you. Go for Remy. Yes, sir, Bravo. Just taxi to the school, please. Thanks. Okay, Bravo. Back to the school. Thank you. Yeah, Golf Charlie Golf, just to confirm, we are just north of Bognor Regis and we'll be turning for a long, three mile long final in a few minutes. Charlie Golf, not a problem. We've got on about a three mile final. Three mile final, we'll go Golf Charlie Golf. And Helicopter Golf from the Yankees, the final for the triangle from the north. The Yankee Roger Kane's crash and triangle is established between 0707. Roger, Helicopter Golf from Golf Charlie Oscar Charlie Golf on three mile long final runway three two. Roger, thanks Rob, uh, Golf Charlie Golf. Traffic, engine, speed. Charlie Golf, welcome to Goodwood, and when you're ready, it's a uh, right turn there, if you just park in the front row, just in front of the tower. Okay, go. Charlie Golf. Whenever something goes wrong in aviation, we always worry that it's going to be expensive to resolve. We were so lucky on this occasion that the fix was an incredibly easy one. On arriving at Goodwood, a quick look behind the instrument panel revealed that the retaining thumb screws on the serial port plugs had vibrated loose, allowing the plugs to partially disengage. A few seconds later they were back in position and with the thumb screws tightened the dyno was fully operational with no faults. I've now added inspection of the plugs to my pre-flight checklist. 